This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Alhamdulillah, all praises to the creator of the heavens and the earth. It's brought you back again. You're watching the Dean Show, and I'm Eddie, your host. And my next guest will be with us in a second when we come back. is going to be talking about how the Bible, that's right, the Bible led him to this way of life that's practiced by over 1.5 billion people from all across the globe. That's right, the Bible led him to Islam. And we're going to find out how is this possible. So for our Christian neighbors, friends, Jewish brethren, all the people who are out there who read this book, the Bible, how does someone read the Bible and become a Muslim? It's possible, and we're going to learn about this person's story when we come back. Sit tight. Don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Alaikum, salam, talal, barakatuh. Abdul Malik? LeBlanc. LeBlanc. That's right. Melvin. Melvin. How are you? Alhamdulillah. You just said something in Arabic. I did. What was that? Alhamdulillah. Yes. All praise be to Allah. All praise be to Allah. Now, is this something that you can find in the Bible? All praise be to Allah. Uh, not exactly. There is, uh, there is parts of uh, the Bible that gives praise to Allah. That is correct. Okay, so when we say Allah, are we talking about some moon god? Who are we talking about when we say Allah? Because we said this word twice now. Uh, when we talk about Allah, we simply are talking about uh, the one, the one God with no partners, no male, no female, it's no partners. Um, we're talking about the one who holds, can hold the heaven and the earth in his hands, mm -hmm. who is, has not been seen by man. The one who is the merciful, the most gracious the one who will call us all to the day of judgment. Now, I opened up the show and this probably got a lot of people's attention. So they were going to tune out, possibly. Some people just tuned in. So for the people that are still with us, they want to know how did the Bible lead you to Islam? How is that possible? So give us a little bit of introduction to this, uh, you know, and then we can really dwell into the topic. Uh, I grew up as a Catholic. I was uh, an altar boy in, uh, in the Catholic Church, uh, going to church 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes the only one going to church, and uh, in front of me was mostly elderly at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I went through uh, pretty close to the church all my life. Uh, I was in the military in Great Falls, Montana. Hua. Uh, is, that, is that one of the Hua? Were you in the Army? No, I was in the Air Force. Have you heard this, uh, this uh, uh, shout, shout uh, out? Hua? Maybe, not in the Air Force. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I was in the Air Force, uh, pretty close, again, pretty close to the church, uh, learning the Bible and teaching the Bible to, uh, to kids there. I uh, had an opportunity to become a minister for an AME church in Great Falls, Montana. Uh, I decided not to after uh, many days of contemplation and uh, scary moments. I, I decided not to. Uh, while I was in the military, I, I studied many of the different religions, uh, Hinduism, Rastafarian, I Ching, Confucius, Baptist, Catholic, Protestant, Episcopalian, and so forth. Uh, but one thing I never found uh, in reading the Bible where uh, Jesus said, I am God. And I think that's a definite. We need to hear that. Because just as uh, I was asked you, what's your name? And you tell me your name is, let's say your name is uh, Dean. I said, uh, and I continue to call you Dean, and that's not your name. You'll get very angry with me. Yes. So that's a very important thing. So what would be even more important was for Jesus to tell us who he was. So if he was God, he would have said, I am God. But he never made that statement, nor can you go through the Bible and find out where he said he, he, he had any attributes of God. That is, the merciful, the all-knower, uh, the forgiver. Everything that Jesus talked about, he said, I do because of the will of my Father. He did nothing up on his own. He never said, I am God, nor did he call himself 
God, nor did he ask of people to worship him. You will find nowhere in there where he said, asked of anyone to worship him. One of the apostles came to him and said, uh, and asked of him, how should we pray? And he simply said, our father, as Muslims know, you know, when we translate it into our father, our father in, from an Arabic point of view is the Rabb, the sustainer and cherisher of all the worlds. And he, that was the prayer. He told that, that individual to pray to the one in heaven. And also in that prayer, it talks about um, asking him for the forgiveness of your sins, giving him your daily bread, leading you on the right path. So nowhere will you find in the Bible where Jesus is telling anyone to worship him instead of the one that has sent him. So as you go through it and you, you begin to, to try and understand it better, you will see that Jesus talked about one of the greatest commandments, the first commandment. And uh, on two occasions, uh, individuals came to him. One was a lawyer, and another man said, What shall I do to have eternal life? What shall I do to have eternal life? The same formula that exists for all of us, from Adam all the way to now. The same formula. He said, If you want to have eternal life, keep the commandments. And one of the most important commandments is the first four commandments. Thou shalt not have no other God but one God. That is the core of what we do as Muslims. Thou shalt not have no other God but one God. So a lot of times you'll hear Muslims say, La ilaha in the law. That means there is no God but one God. So many of these examples that I, that I, I drew upon, although they, are very, although they are very simple, they, they constitute all that exists for us, that there is only one creator. So, for example, if you read the first four commandments, it talks about iniquity being brought on the third and fourth generation of them that hate God. When he talks about hate, it means worshipping other than Him. And we can see that in our life today. We can see how our generations over time is getting worse and worse and worse because we are worshipping other than our Creator. Is this now equivalent when you say worshipping other than the Creator for people who out of their, their love for Jesus, they end up elevating Him to God, so they're making a God next to God? Is this equivalent to that, what you're talking about? That is equivalent Jesus to or His mother? Jesus, peace be upon Him, told that they will worship Him uselessly. The teachings of man. Nowhere did Jesus tell anyone to worship Him instead of the one that had sent Him. So how do we, in the, in the opening, the Bible... And you have a book called The Bible Led Me to Islam. That's right. So how did the Bible lead you to Islam? I think from, from the many, the simple things, you know, as I began to study about Islam, I, I wanted a book that compiled everything into one. Because you can read some things from Ahmed Didad. You can read uh, from, from other authors. But when I started compiling all of this, and it slowly moved me. The, the first, and f first thing was that, Clearly, Jesus never said, I am God. That's clear. We got that, that right was off the clear. Bat. That was right off the bat. So that continued. And he never said, I am God. So those things moved me away from saying that Jesus is God. Because I do believe those to be very important in, in terms of Jesus saying who he is to us. Also, he never said I, he is the son of God. As a Christian, practicing Christianity, knowing Christianity, coming from a background of Christianity, did you before believe these things, that he was God, one in a trinity, son of God? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, that was the, the religion that my mom and dad gave to me. And alhamdulillah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a platform. But, you know, just like you and, and others out there who may decide, well, what university I want to go to? What kind of, uh, where do I want to live in life? Uh, what, what kind of wife do I want to have? You know, we make all these choices. But a lot of times we, we don't make the choices for religion. We simply carry our parents' religious with us. I think that we have to take that backpack off, I call it the backpack of religion, and put it in front of us and, and go ahead and read the Torah, go ahead and read the Bible, go ahead and read the Quran, and make that choice of your own without, being, uh, without things being passed down from you. You know, there's new knowledge now. Back in the, the 50s, there was, no, there was no cure for cancer. But now, there is a cure for cancer. So what we want to be able to do, we want to be able to share this with everybody. We didn't have that knowledge back then, so let me share this with you right now. We're going to take a break, and this is really exciting. You have been, uh, this, uh, we're learning a lot, and we're going to sit back and be back for more here on The Dean Show. Sit tight. And with good deeds, uh, we'll find that good breeds good. Clear out your mind and your heart of hatred mm -hmm. 
and preconceived notions of racism and nationalism because you cannot have anything inside of you that's like that against people and still be successful with them all. Back here on the Dean Show with Abdul Malik. Abdul Malik, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And tell us now, you're practicing Christianity. You're going through, you know, the the you know the normal worship practices, going to church on Sunday. You know, you were teaching the Bible also. Yes, I was. I was a, a Bible. St I was teaching Bible studies to to kids. Okay, so you knew the Bible quite well. I knew it quite well. At what point in your life did you start to question the beliefs that were passed down and taught to you? I don't know if there's any particular point or, or time. It was, it was a, it was a, many of the brothers who were in the Air Force with me, we'd sit down quite often and talk about the Bible. Just have a healthy dialogue? Just have a healthy dialogue. And, and most of us did not believe at that time that Jesus was God. It was just a matter of we were all in what we call a kind of a neutral ground. Yeah. We were simply trying to, to, we didn't believe that he was God because some of the things that, uh, biblically, uh, it depended upon the faith of an individual in order for Jesus to heal them. Well, from Allah can do whatever he wants to do, regardless of one faith or not. He doesn't need that component in order for him to do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So many of the things that Jesus uh, spoke about himself, uh, when he spoke about uh, Allah, um, all those things was a, was a culmination of things, just things that kind of uh, continue to move you toward, you know, it, it, for example, there's one in the Bible that says, pray without ceasing. Yes. It's in, uh, I think, 1 Thessalonians. It's pray without ceasing. Now, you, you could, it's possible you can do that just simply with your tongue, but when I met this Muslim brother, in 1985, when he showed me things on how to go to bed at night and be in a state of worship, when he told me, he taught me how to uh, how to perform wudu, the same as uh, uh, this is all a part of being in the state of worship. How you know when I uh, enter a room or when I exit a room or when I'm in the in the presence of uh, of of of, uh, of, of non-Muslims or a presence of one of a women. Uh, or when I uh, putting on my clothes, he was able to show me how I can be in a state of ibadah, a state of worship, 24 hours a day without having to keep the remembrance on my tongue. Yes. So when I met this brother, uh, his name is Fauzi Senet, he's from Bahrain. When I met him, him and I were um, in the Air Force together, and uh, he had a he had a uh, we were we were in the room, and he his bed was here and mine was here, and one morning. Uh, if you don't mind me to go into this, one morning uh, <clears throat> I heard him making some noise over there at the sink. So I kind of looked up and I saw him, and then he took his foot and put it inside of the sink. And I said to myself, well, if that's the way he washed, that's the way he washed. So that day when I came back for my lunch, I saw him on the ground, prostrating in the room. So I came and got my stuff and then I left. And then the next day, he stayed away that night. The next day, I came in for lunch also and I saw him do the same thing. So that evening I asked him, I said, uh, I said, what are you doing there? He said, he said, I'm praying. I asked him, who are you praying to? He said, I'm praying to God. I said, what God? He said, the one God. And then I asked him, I said, well, what religion are you? He said, I am Muslim. And then I asked, I said, uh, you know Louis Farrakhan? You thought it was the nation now? I thought it was the nation. Yeah. I said, you know Louis Farrakhan? He said, no. I said, you know Malcolm X? He said, no. And I said, well, what kind of Muslim are you? He said, I'm the old Muslim. So this gentleman was able to teach me the how-tos. Everything that the Bible told us the what, Islam tells you the how-tos. Like, for example, honor your father and your mother. Yes. It clearly says, honor your father and your mother in, in the... the the, the fifth commandment. But Islam tells you how to do that. La ilaha illallah, there is no God but one God. Islam tells you how to do that. Pray without ceasing. Islam tells you how to do that. Uh, 
treating your neighbors correctly. Islam tells you how to do that. So when I met this brother, I, I was able to bring all these things together through the religion of Islam because it gave me, it gave me the how-tos. Islam gave me the how-to. The Bible gave me the fundamentals. Islam gave me the how-tos. So bringing those two together, I believe the Bible led me to Islam. So do you see now that you have consciously chosen to submit to the one God? That's what a Muslim is. Alhamdulillah. Practicing Islam, submission right. to the one God. That's how you get peace. Do you see that remnants of it in the Bible? You, do, do people, if they're looking, if they're those who are Christian, those who uh, follow the first five books and then the Old Testament and New Testament, is, is this an extension now? Is this the, the final completion of all the revelations? And how can people, if they're also confused about the Trinity, if they're also confused of, you know, of their religion, if things just don't make sense, and they want to make sense of it all, and they, they're still not ready to, you know, let go of what they have? Can they dig a little deeper and then will it lead them to where it led you? Well, I think, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, we all know that hidayah, yes. that this, this nature to become Muslim or to seek Islam, comes from Allah. Yes. They just have to be willing. They just have to be willing to be open and let, let Allah lead them. Uh, they're listening to us today. They can simply say, it. I said this, when I met Fauzi, I knew there was, there was five things about him that intrigued me. One, he was 26, year old, 26 years old and he was a virgin. Mm -hmm. Two, he was an athlete, a superior athlete. And I know coming up in America, uh, an athlete and 26 years old, uh, a virgin, they don't go together. So, you know, if, you have, if you're an athlete, you're definitely <coughs> going to be able to either kiss or touch one. But he, he wasn't like that. Uh, if, he, if he had to fight, he could. Yeah. So there was nothing, you know, wrong with him. He had brotherhood and he was religious. One thing Fauzi taught me, because he showed me the spirit of the law. We were watching TV one evening, uh, and he happened to see a cleavage of a woman, and he did this. He turned his head like that. When I saw that, that told me that's Islam, because the Bible teaches you the spirit of it. So every time he saw, he saw a woman not dressed properly, he turned his head like that. That taught me something. That was Islam in action. That was Islam in action. So I figured that Fauzi should have been on the, the Oprah Winfrey show because there was, would be no one like him who would show those kinds of attributes here in America. Amazing, amazing. Let, let's, before we move a little bit forward, tell us, because you made a bold statement. You said Jesus never claimed to be God, never called people to worship himself. Yeah. Uh, a few passages that people, and I'm sure you've heard these before, he said, I and the Father are one. Yeah. Surely, I, surely we... I and the Father are one, not, not in terms of, uh, not in terms of uh, you know, like, like the egg having three parts or like the tree having three parts, not in relation to that. One in what they were, he was supposed to do. He simply came to do the will of the Father. So what he was supposed to do is the oneness of that. Not so much one in terms of uh, being together three in one and so forth. No, in what he was told to come and do, that was the oneness of it. Now someone says, you know what, I don't believe that Jesus is God, but he said, because it's in the Bible, that no one comes to the Father except through me. So I just pray through Jesus because he's the Son of God. Yeah, no, that, I... That, have you heard that before? Yes, that's based on belief, yeah. You have to know, as Muslims, we believe in Jesus. So that's accepting him coming here on earth. There are others who do not believe that Jesus came here on earth. For example, I, I mentioned earlier about how do we pray. Jesus told an individual how to pray. He said, our Father... O Rabb, who is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. So all that we can ask for is, is written inside of that, that prayer there. A very similar prayer to Surah Al-Fatiha, which we have. It's Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So you, you have to be willing. You know, there's a lot of things out there that can uh, prevent one. I had uh, one, one brother over in Saudi Arabia. A 35-year-old man, uh, after hearing about Islam, called his father and asked his father, could he become Muslim? Because there are a lot of things that pre can prevent us from becoming Muslim. Exterior, even more now, there are a lot of things out there that would prevent someone from, from becoming Muslim just because of the propaganda. But if you read about Islam, uh, let me get back to this brother. Uh, the father told him, son, if that's what you want to do, go ahead on and do it. 
So there's a lot of external things we have to kind of rid ourselves of. Bef and, uh, and, and for example, when I did the Shahada, my Shahada, I was at a stoplight in Denver, Colorado, and I said, Oh Allah, I don't know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But if Fauzi knows him, then teach him to me. So I give the same thing to our audience today. Yes, they may have heard new things today. Go ahead on and say, Oh Allah, if what these brothers are saying is the truth, guide me to the right path. Now, and Allah will take care of that. Now, if someone's a little bit timid of using the word Allah, we know that Allah is not a moon God. Sa He's not a man or a woman. He's the creator of all that exists. He's the one God. And didn't Jesus in Aramaic, didn't he say Allah? -ha? Allah. -ha. Allah. -ha. That is correct. So if they don't want to use this word, they're a little timid. How else could they call upon the creator? Oh, God. Oh God. Oh God. But if they got a mental picture of him like an old man, you know, that with the big beard and that doesn't work? No, because no one has seen his shape nor heard his voice. That's clearly written in the Bible. No one has seen his shape nor heard his voice. So I think it's sincerity. It's all sincerity. about sincerity inside of your heart. If you simply say, in reference, you know, you, you make the prayer. Because God knows, Allah knows the prayer that you're going to pray. Okay? So make that prayer and ask him if what we're saying today is the right thing, bring me closer to it. And with that, we're going to take another break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Back here on The Dean Show with my guest Melvin Melvin, that's right And we're almost out of time I want to ask you a few more questions You have a book It's called The Bible Led Me to Islam That's correct So we talked about that. Also, you have a explanation of Islam, and you know, in the path is called Islam, so simple. Islam, so simple. So, can you go ahead and for those people who also have watched some of our shows, and you know, they're really interested in what we have to say. They they like what Islam is about. They like this this way of life that calls people to just worship God, to just worship the Creator, and to do good deeds, righteous deeds. It calls people to accountability, day of judgment, paradise, the wonderful rewards, eternity in, in the most wonderful places that you can be, the okay. paradise, hellfire, okay. accountability. So how do you explain Islam to those people without all the confusion, making it very simple? I tell them, as you mentioned, Aramaically, uh, Jesus, if he would say the God, he would say Allah, if he would say the God. One, Allah means the God. Two, Islam is simply the religion of submission. Three, a Muslim is simply one who submits. Those are three things that we, we, we basically say. Islam is not nothing new. The prostration of the prayer, the prostration as we prostrate on the ground, we, we know in the Bible, Jesus fell to his face. Many times you look through the New Testament, you will see they, that they say they fell between their knees. So the prostration isn't nothing new. We know that uh, Jesus, when he met his companions, he would say, peace be with you. As brothers, as Muslim brothers say, assalamu alaikum, we know that that's not new. Also, we, the, the, the appollution, the cleanliness that we do, we know that Moses did that. The call to prayer that we give, calling people to prayer. We know that Moses used to do it with a horn. There, there is, Islam is not nothing new. Jesus, peace be upon him, did not eat pork. So if my Christian brothers are out there who are eating pork, you know, to be more Christ-like, you definitely got to get rid of it. So many things like that, simple things, that should just, just should be shatter the falsehood in our mind to allow us to say, okay, for example, he said, uh, we need to love the Lord thy God with all thy strength, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy mind. That's Islam. That's la ilaha illallah, having no other partners having no one, not money, not desires, not lust, not home, not work, no other, no other creator but Allah. Uh, a couple more points. Tell us now a person has put their whole hope and ambition and their, their dream now is to go to paradise and they've been told since childhood that, you know what, Jesus, he died for your sins. So, so now they're stuck here. They don't want to let this go because they feel like they're going to sacrifice paradise for that. What do you got to talk to them? If you want to have eternal life, Keep the commandments. 
One of the very first commandments you need to have is, Thou shalt not have no other God but one God. Jesus said that on more than one occasion. If you want to have eternal life, keep the commandments. The foremost one, that, the foremost one is the first four. Thou shalt not have no other God but one God. That is the way you get. That is the same formula that exists from beginning to end. That's the formula from Adam all the way to, to nowadays us. That's the formula. If you want to have eternal life, keep the commandments. The greatest commandment is La ilaha illallah. There is no God but one God. The people also now they hear a lot of negative, there's a lot of uh, false representation by the media. People feel that, look, you know, Islam is about, you know, blowing things up and people getting blown up and terrorism and terrorizing. What do you guys say about this? That's not Islam. I wouldn't bring my kids up in it. If that was Islam, I wouldn't raise my kids as Muslim. And I, I was raised in the, in the southern part of uh, Louisiana where everybody raised me. If I did something wrong down the street, my neighbors would whip me. And then when I get home, my father would whip me. So I would not want my kids to be raised in something other than what is correct. Are you an Arab now? So you're still American? What, you know, when you become a Muslim, do you become an Indo-Pak? No. <laughs> do you become an no. Arab? What, what goes no. on? No, I'm, I'm an African-American, uh, and I'm a Muslim. That's it? That's Did it. You, you got to get dipped in a pool? You got to do some, some no. uh, crazy rituals? You don't have to do that. It's just a testimony of the tongue, because Allah knows its sincerity. I, I work with inmates, and I tell inmates, you can fool me, but you can't fool God. So if you say, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except uh, Allah, then you have to be sincere about that. And that you can't fool Allah, and it's best for you not to play around with God, because he can, you don't want His wrath to be upon you. Last closing comments and suggestions where people can uh, get in contact with you to read some of your books, and also for that person that's right there, they, again, you know, they like what we have to say. They're confused with all the other beliefs that have been brought up into. And they just, you know, the family, friends, you know, the social environment, they're a little bit, you know, nervous now. Right. They want to take that step, that leap of faith, but they just need a little bit of encouragement. Talk to us right there. I say, I say brothers, you know, you, you know what's in your heart. Brothers and sisters, you know what's in your heart. And you know, as, as well as I know, uh, you cannot tell... If, if you've never been to New York and someone asks you, how is New York? You cannot tell them New York is bad simply because you heard it on television. It's best for you to go ahead and read about it. Uh, the, the best thing I can ask you to do is go to the nearest masjid. That's what the brother Fauzi did to me. He took me to the masjid in Denver, Colorado, and I asked the questions I needed to ask. That's the thing you want to do. Uh, the analogy I gave, you can't deny something or condemn something you don't have understanding of. Okay, best to think, i give you an example. My father thought I was an Iranian terrorist because I became Muslim in 1985 and the only thing that was going on at the time was Terry Anderson being taken hostage. But over the years, my father noticed that him and I became closer. The last words that my father said before he died was, give me water, Melvin. So, only Allah knows that, but what I say to you is just, you know, read as you did to... Pursue your degree, what, what wife, where you want to live, okay, what kind of job you want, what kind of salary you want to make, work, work, have. Go down and take the books. Put the books in front of you and read them. Read the Quran. Don't be afraid of it. When you read the Quran, don't read it like you read the Bible. Read it so Allah can lift things up for you. Because if you read it like you read the Bible, you will not understand it. Because it doesn't have a chronological order to it. It's a revelation. So that's what I would say to the brothers. To, to don't say something that you have no knowledge of. Go ahead and seek it and then ask Allah, ask God to lead you to the right path if what we are talking about today is the truth. Thank you very much. May like God thank Almighty, you. the Creator of Allah, thank you very much. reward you. Thank you. Thank you. Shukran. And thank you for sitting tight through another episode of The Dean Show. Great advice from somebody who was there and he's here now and he read the Bible and the Bible led him to this beautiful way of life this way of life that brings peace and contentment to one's life satisfaction happiness and eternity in paradise living for God living your life to be the best human being that you can be read this book the verbatim Word of God you can get it for free 1-800-662-ISLAM give us a call pick up your copy and come back here to the Dean Show every week and until next time, 
peace be unto you.